Hi everybody, welcome back. So I decided recently that I want to start going through all the 15 or 20 large storage boxes of old motorcycle parts and old Jeep parts and other things and start cleaning them up and trying to get them up for sale. These are parts for projects where I either went in another direction, um, decided I'm not going to do it, or um, they're just dead. So um, I decided my best bet would be to get an ultrasonic cleaner. So during this last sale at AliExpress, I ordered one. I ordered this one from the official Vivor store on AliExpress. And this shipped from the United States. I got it within about a week. And I, you see I've already opened it because they um, some of the ones that said they were 220 only. So I contacted them and asked them to make sure they were 110 volts in the U.S. And they assured me that all the ones being shipped to the U.S. were 110 volts. And mine would be as well. So I did cut it open just to make sure that it had a U.S. 110 volt cord in it. And um, it does. So let's get it out of the box. Oh, and this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this with my own money. Nobody approached me and asked me to do this review. This item was bought for use around my home and garage. So, and you're asking yourself, Chuck, there are so many videos of these things out there. Why are you making another one? And the answer is because I want to. So let's get it out of the box. And I have not taken it out yet. All I have done was opened it up and made sure that it had a 110 volt cord in it. So, got some packing materials. Kind of throw those over there. And, um, uh, there is the item itself. Let's get the box out of the way. Now this is a heated as well as a um, as well as an ultrasonic cleaner. And I got the 10 liter version. I did a fair amount of study on this before I bought one and everybody said get one bigger than what you think you'll need. So there it is. And let's take a look and see what we get on the inside. Got a kind of a thin stainless steel lid with a handle on top. Has a manual. We'll know if you can see that. I'm way back behind the camera. Got a manual. Yeah, doesn't really tell you that much. There's basically operating instructions are from there down that side. I don't think there's much to really know about it, but I will look them over. There's my 110 volt cord. And during the last sale on AliExpress, I got this. It was about $110. And comes with a basket with a handle. And the inside is pretty much just um, just clear stainless steel. Not much to see on the front. We have, looks like, a timer over here and a temperature over here. Time up, down, temp up, down, on and off. And that's all that's there. I want to make sure you guys can see this. There are handles on the side, little vents. has a really nice appearance. And then a drain on this side. Little ball valve drain, nice. Vents on the back and the plug-in. And that's pretty much all there is. Oh, well, there's a spot on the bottom for a fan. Looks like there's a, I guess a cooling fan. Can't think of anything else it would be except a cooling fan. So let's take a quick look at the instructions before we get started. And let's see what it says. Tells me what I can use it for, tells me the specifications. Probably in here it tells me how not to kill myself with it. Operating instructions. Open cover and place the items into the cleaning container then fill with water. The water should cover the item but not exceed the ruling mark. Okay, close the cover, plug in. Right knob can set the clean time. 
then it'll cleaning and the indication light will be on left knob can set the temperature when the left knob will be rotating around you can set the heat well there's nothing to rotate around oh that was not digital right time plus minus all right not really not really much in here we need to know about other than heat it up put it in and um turn it on Okay, I guess the ruling mark is this rim here. This is supposed to be 10 liters. So I just happen to have some of these. These hold a gallon. We don't do liters here in my house. We do gallons and quarks. So let's make sure the ball, ball valve is shut before I start filling it. And it is. And I'm going to fill it all the way up because I can. Okay, this don't look like it's going to be because um, this should be about, what, three and three quarter liters, something like that. So this should hold two and a half of these or over two. And it doesn't look like it's going to. Okay, that was not quite two gallons, so I don't know, maybe maybe eight. Well, not even that much. Yeah, that's kind of disappointing because that's um that's certainly not um not ten liters. Not sure where they're getting ten liters from. I guess maybe if you filled it all the way up to the very brim, which you're not supposed to. One thing I want to do is I want to see how long it takes to heat this up. Oops, let's plug it in first. Let's plug it in and just make sure it lights up and all the controls work. Guess I could have done that first. But they say not to run these without watering them. So... Flip, there's a power switch. Oh. Wow, it's got a hell of a beep, doesn't it? All right, pull my chair around so I can get a better look at it. All right, this is set. This is what the set temperature is here, and what the current temperature. So the current temperature is 22 to 22 or 23 degrees, flipping back and forth between it, and it's set to 50. I have a um, I have a little temperature gauge here. I'm going to switch it right now. It's set to there. It is. So let's sit that in there, and let's see what it says the temperature is. And while that's I don't want that to go all the way in. Set it there in the corner. I want to get my phone and get a timer going on it. And let's see how long it takes to go from 23C to 50. So, I know I got a timer here someplace, probably under clock, right? Clock, there we go, clock, timer, oh, stopwatch, how about that? So, there it is, what does my gauge say? My gauge says it is still bouncing around, 22. Okay, that's not working very well. How come? Did I submerge it? Or is it because I'm holding it? Oops, switched it back to Fahrenheit. How about this? Will this work better? Oh, now that's on Fahrenheit as well. Alright, let's switch that over. There we go. That says 27. Okay. And my little gauge in there says 27 too. Okay, whatever. Um, let's turn 
I'm going to leave the temperature set at 50 for now and let's say on and let's start and let's see how long it takes to get it from what it thinks is 22 to 50 C. I did note that some people say just fill them up with hot water to begin with but you know what unless you're going to be draining it and refilling it all the time then um, you really probably don't want to um, be doing that. And I'm not going to I'm not going to put cleaning solution directly in there. I am going to put my parts and my cleaning solution in a freezer bag and I'm just going to leave this with water. I watched a number of reviews of people who said that and they definitely seem to think that that's the best way to do it. That way you're constantly not having to clean out the inside of this thing. So going to speed it up right now and we'll see how long this takes. Okay, it has been right around 30 minutes, 30 minutes and 50 seconds. And one interesting thing to note is that the temperature, actual temperature reading on the machine does not increase if the, if the Sonic is not running, if the transducer is not running. It will sit at whatever temperature it's turned on at until you run the transducer. And it does seem to read 4 or 5 degrees low. Right now, the temperature inside there is 46 degrees. And um, so the heater itself isn't bad. I figured if it got anywhere near 50 in half an hour, that would be pretty good. Because that's, that's um, close to two gallons of water. And the only reason I didn't put any more in, because I know the parts I put in will raise it up, and I didn't want to go too high. But you'll note if I now turn on the cleaner, you'll now see the temperature will start to change. It makes me want to take it apart and see where that, that um, thermistor is located and why it wouldn't just simply be. That's really odd. I bet that thermistor is someplace that it will not read a temperature change. I don't know, that's really odd. But once you turn it on, it will fluctuate up and down, and then it will slowly start to read the correct temperature. Makes me wonder what would happen if you just switched it to 50 or 60, didn't turn the transducer on and walked away. Would it keep heating forever? Anyway, it's hot enough for me to test it, so um, I'm going to switch it off. I'm going to reset the time to five minutes and I have some things to test with. Let's take a look at them. I didn't go through digging the stuff that I really want to work with because um, I smacked one of my toes up really bad and um, it doesn't make me feel like I want to be out in my storage unit digging through stuff. So I have this trashy old padlock. It's pretty filthy. I have this pair of very old, my dad had these, very old wire strippers and it's all filthy as can be and it can use to be cleaned up real well. I have got an old pipe wrench which is in <laughs> probably, probably 70 years old. I've got a large one and a half inch socket can't even remember what I got this socket for, but it's pretty filthy too. I have a brass pipe set of brass pipe fittings that are sitting in the drawer. Don't even remember what I built this for. Here's a similar aluminum piece. Don't even remember what I put this together before, but it's pretty filthy. Here's something even worse. Here's another brass piece. Well, that's just nasty there. <laughs> I've got a pair of kind of rusty old scissors that sit out in my shop. I've got an impact extension, impact adapter. It looks like it's three quarters to one inch. And then I got a grody screw extractor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those in the, in that freezer bag. If I can find what I did with it. And I'm going to fill them with that um, purple power cleaner that I like, probably 
50-50 mix. This is 100% here. I'll probably make a 50-50 mix and I'll be right back. Okay, I have all my stuff in the bag with my mixture of cleaner. Let some, and you can see it, and shake it around and that cleaner still looks perfectly clean. Let's put it in the tank. And yeah, it was a good thing I didn't put any more water in it than I did. Oh, I got a lot of air in that, don't I? Me and Ziploc bags, we have never really gotten along very well. Let's see if I can get some of that air out of that bag. I don't know what it is about me and Ziploc bags, but I just have a really tough time with them, getting them sealed. All right, let's try again. Oh, there's still a lot of air in it. Oh well, I guess the air can float to the top. Making a mess here. That won't be a first in my life, let me tell you. Although I think I would probably like not to splash water all over my phone. I was hoping to get those kind of spread out in there a little better. I think I have too much water in there. Um, <laughs> Be right back. Okay, I had to take about two and a half cups or 750 milliliters out of it for you guys in Euroland or pretty much everywhere else except the backwards United States where we're still using Imperial units. And no matter what I do, I can't get the air out of that bag. So I'm starting to wonder if that's the best way to do it. Maybe an open top unit might, you know, something like a jar with an open top might be the best. I don't know if I need the basket in it, but I have heard that you should put stuff in the basket. So there we is. There we are. I am going to put the lid on. That's been in there for a bit, and you still the the cleaner fluid is still fairly clear. I'm going to put the top on. It's set for five minutes, and I am going to tell it to go. Okay, there is a nice loud beep when it is when it is done. It still says 40, you know if you can see it at that angle, still says 42 degrees, 41, 42 degrees. Let's see what the actual temperature is. Actual temperature is 47. And if you look at my bag, that has gotten my cleaning solution has gotten really cloudy. But you know what? I think we can do better. Let's give it five more. Five and go. Okay, we are at the end of another five minute cleaning cycle, and oh my goodness, that um that cleaning solution is really murky now. So we've had ten minutes total in there, and um my stuff all tends to be old and kicked on with stuff, so I think I am just gonna do it one more time. Five and and go. And let's give it five more, and then after 15 minutes, we'll take it out and we'll see what looks like it maybe got more than what it needed, and what might still need some more. Okay, we are at the end of another five-minute cycle, and also it has been. 59 minutes since I started the heating. The temperature gauge on the front of this is it says it's 47 degrees in the tank and um, my little gauge here says it's 52. So maybe yours is better than mine but um, if I were you I would check. I think I'm gonna get these things out of there and let's see what they look like. Hang on. I got a little I got a little tank of clear water and a towel and a cloth to dry them with so let's get them out of there and see what they look like i'm going to kind of pull back a little bit in fact i think i'll maybe move to the other side of the camera yeah 
yeah, that water's hot. I mean, it's not hot enough to burn me, but it's hot enough you wouldn't want to put your hand in it for very long. And my, um, take a look at that cleaning solution. Can you see that? That is, um, that is really cloudy. You would not want that on the inside of your new ultrasonic cleaner, I would assume. So, what are we starting with? Here are those old those old wire strippers that were my dad's. Hell, they might have been his dad's before him, too. And I have to admit, they came out a heck of a lot cleaner than what they were. That is a heck of a lot cleaner than what they were. What's next in there? Here is that uh, blue aluminum T. I'm just, I'm not trying to scrub them down. I'm just trying to dry them so they won't drip. Yeah, that is a, that is another significant improvement. Here is that brass T. And I'm just going to dry it off. And, um, didn't really brighten it all up all that much, but it certainly took all the grime and the gunk off it, which is an improvement. Here is that old, ow, that is hot. Here is that old, um, pipe wrench. Did a pretty decent job on that. It's still shiny because it's all wet, but, um, it, that, that made a, a significant difference in its appearance. Significant, I think. Here's the scissors. Let's see what the scissors look like. Oops, I'm gonna, I thought I was rinsing them off there and I started forgetting, didn't I? Okay. It didn't take it didn't take most of the discoloration off, but um, it certainly cleaned them. Here is that disgusting grody grody brass pipe fitting with the um, and again I'm not scrubbing them I'm just kind of pressing on them to absorb the water. It did a fabulous job cleaning that up. Because that was just packed and grody. That's pretty darn good. Here's that inch and a half socket. Ah, that is hot. Jeez. Yeah, look at that. Huh? Look at that. Not 100%. It might take another 10, 15 minutes in there, but... That's a significant improvement. All right, I'm getting tired of reaching down in there. Ow, ow, ow. Here is that. I'll rinse it off and that'll cool it down a little too. Here is that um, socket adapter. Hard to see because it's um, it's a, an impact adapter, so it's black. But when you look down inside there, that's pretty clean down inside there, and it wasn't before. I have a bad habit, by the way, of when I'm really tired, I'll put my tools away dirty. Here's that lock. That lock was pretty, pretty dirty on the front. Let's see what it looks like now. Very clean and yeah, I would do this inside the house, wouldn't I? Oh well, it's only water. Very clean. Very clean. I haven't used that in many years. Just found it laying around the other day. Here is that really filthy screw extractor. Hell, that looks... Another another five or ten minutes in there, and you might mistake that for a new one. Nice. Ow, 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 that is hot. I think that's everything. Wow. I'm going to sit that over here, and maybe that will cool that down a bit. S 
still reading 48, 49 degrees on the front. And inside there we are 53. So yeah, it's 4 degrees off, 3 to 5 degrees off I would call it. And um, I'm going to switch that off so it doesn't continue to heat it. And um, I'll let that cool off. So, what do I think of this? My initial review and opinion. These are just my thoughts on having used it once over a period of, what, about maybe an hour. It seems, the build quality seems okay. There isn't a lot of insulation in it, I don't think, although the outside is nowhere near as warm as inside that tank. Let's see what the outside of the tank is. Outside of the tank's 28 degrees, so there probably is some insulation in it. Um, the build quality seems okay. The sheet metal is fairly thin on the outside, so you do get a little bit of vibration from the transducer and the sound, but it is sufficient for the task, without a doubt. Same with the lid. The lid's a little bit thin, but you know what? You're, um, it's a cover. It's not a structural piece of it. So I consider the build quality to be acceptable. Let's get on to the heater. The heater, it's had an hour, and it's it probably got it to a genuine 50 degrees, probably in 50 minutes, in around there. And again, on 110 volts, I consider that to be adequate. You guys who have 220 volts available to you, or even 230 or 240, you might um you might find yours heats quite a bit quicker than mine does here on. I think I usually get about 118, 119 here. So that's acceptable to me. That temperature gauge. Oh, God, this is 2021. Can't we really make a better temperature gauge than that? Um, I have two gauges here. They both read within a, a half a degree of each other, and each of them shows this one being three to five degrees low. And it does not seem to like to change readings. As the temperature goes up, it doesn't seem to like to update unless the ultrasonic transducer is turned on. I'm not sure what's up with that. I am, um, I'm tempted not even to call that adequate. It, I guess it sort of kind of is, but I really think they could probably do better. I mean, it, come on, it's probably a dollar part. I'm, I may have to open it up and see where it's located just for my own peace of mind. I have never looked inside of one of these before, so I don't know. Now, on to the actual ultra, ultrasonic cleaning. I'm pretty impressed with it. It works well. I would consider that to be certainly satisfactory, if not even better. So, there you have it. There is my unboxing, initial test and review, and my opening opinion. It may change later. I'll let you know if it does. Of the Vivor 10 liter, and it's not 10 liters. Um, I may test that better again in the future, too, but I don't think it actually holds 10 liters. Certainly not a usable 10 liters. And remember, put your stuff that you're going to clean in first so you don't do what I did and then overfill it and have a mess. But um, it seems to work okay. It actually seemed to clean really well. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to keep using it. I'll report back if I don't like it. I'll put links to it below, both on AliExpress and on Amazon, in case you don't want to buy from one or the other. And hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you the next time. Bye for now.